Since the end of the Cold War in the 90s, worldwide military spending has increased by 76%, with a total of $1.8 trillion spent in 2018 alone. But what if world peace suddenly became a thing, and this money was put towards the stars? Would we have colonies on Mars? Would we have giant space habitats that you could visit? Would we find intelligent life? The Mars One Company, founded in 2011, promised to send humans to Mars by 2024 and estimated the project could cost up to $6 billion. After receiving widespread criticism over the lack of planning, with some calling it a suicide mission and failing to raise $6 billion, the company was declared bankrupt in 2019. More recent and thorough estimates by NASA have concluded that such a project could cost up to $100 billion with the addition of returning the astronauts back to Earth. With our world peace budget, this project could easily be incorporated with more reputable organisations such as NASA and SpaceX. The main portion of the cost is in transporting all of the cargo to Mars. In fact, just to put a bag of sugar into low Earth orbit traditionally cost $22,000. However, with the introduction of SpaceX and their reusable Falcon Heavy rockets, this cost has been reduced to just $2,500. Still, at that price, I don't think our Martian astronauts will be drinking much sugared coffee. Space habitats, or space colonies, have been talked about for years in science fiction, but could they become a reality, given the right funding? There are four major requirements for a permanent space habitat. Artificial gravity, radiation shielding, pressurised and breathable atmosphere, and access to solar energy. The most challenging of these is radiation shielding, with up to 10 tonnes of material needed per square metre. Given how expensive it is to transport material into space, it has been proposed cheaper to mine the moon and transport material from there. In 1976, Gerard O'Neill proposed a design for a space colony called Island One and estimated the cost to be $100 billion. In today's money, that's a massive $441 billion. The colony would house around 10,000 people, gather energy from the sun, rotate fast enough to provide gravity, and even host zero gravity sports in the centre of the structure. I think we can accommodate that into our budget. However, if we are going to mine material from the moon, then we also need a lunar base. Well, in 2016, an astrobiologist at NASA proposed that new technologies such as 3D printing have already decreased the cost significantly. He proposed we could establish a permanent base on the moon for as little as $65 billion. We would use solar panels to gather energy from the sun which could power small robots that harvest the large amounts of ice detected in craters. Contrary to popular belief, SETI, or the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence, receives zero funding from the American government. Private contributions Donations and initiatives such as Breakthrough Listen, which pledged $100 million over 10 years, make up all of SETI's funding. As SETI has been active for more than 30 years, many people believe we have looked everywhere and found nothing. Previous estimates suggest we have looked at just 2% of the sky for alien signals, however the real percentage is much much lower. 
Although the world's collective efforts have probably looked in most of the possible directions at some frequency, there are hundreds of billions of stars in our own galaxy, and just a few thousand have been scrutinised with high sensitivity. For these few thousand, only a small fraction of the available frequency range has been observed. In other words, we have barely begun to scratch the surface. Although it's impossible to know if we would find intelligent life by throwing money at SETI, I think it's important we keep searching, so I'll give SETI 100 billion. 